Thank you and good, good morning all. Okay. So I'll st start by um, acknowledging traditional owners past and present. And I do that in the context that um, you know, we often talk about country, but from the Western's perspective, we're looking at country in terms of real estate. But I don't think that's what they, they're seeing. I think they're seeing country as an ecosystem. And that's really where where I'm going, where I'm trying to take uh, urban, urban home gardening. Um, I think there's a, there's nothing that I'll, there are a few things I bring with the mining industry, apart from a, a level of um, terror and post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but one of the things is that I was disturbingly closely involved to quite a number of mine disasters, in fact, most of them. And one of the things that we got out of that is actually a new health and safety legislation, which doesn't so much look at the symptoms of what's going on, but rather the underlying causes. And that's where I sort of want to take you guys today, look, thinking harder about what are the underlying causes of things that go wrong that we can then implement in our, uh, from my perspective, backyards, but from your perspective, whatever land care area you're, you're working in. And so the, there's two levels. At one level, there's the the thing that's um, overarching, which is things like the globalisation, the commercialisation, and um, the urbanisation. Now, these, uh, as individuals, we can do very, very little, but as a community, we can chip away at them. Um, so I suppose I'll sort of move, move into where the, the talk's going, and um, it's basically the what I'm talking about in terms of uh, the case data from Brisbane is the work that Brisbane Organic Growers has been doing over the last 40-odd sort of years. And basically, we're a, a gardening club and an advocacy group that promotes the growing of fruit and vegetables and herbs in home gardens. But, but home gardens it could be a balcony on a unit, um, it could be a community garden, it could be, like in my case, a, a backyard where I've got about 900 square metres, which is a very comfortable area to grow a whole lot of fruit and vegetables in. It could be a community garden. There's a, now a lot of community gardens around the place. It could be a small farm, and there are little bits and pieces that might even um, relate to sort of some of the broad acre farms. Um, okay, so there's a number of number of challenges out there. Can it work? Yep. Um, I guess one of them is securing nutrient-dense foods. And again, one of the legacies that I bring across from the mining industry is the need to look very hard at our health. Right? And I'd actually ran a, um, a health database for the coal industry, did an analysis of um, 12,000 coal miners, found all this really interesting stuff that the industry hated me for. Time to move on. I moved on. So really I'm coming at this... Um, home gardening and land care perspectives from really that, that health perspective that what we're looking to do is to have a supply of um, food that um, can uh, avoid having uh, toxicity issues. It, um, it uh, needs to avoid doing environmental damage. It needs to, um, I guess, connect with social change. Now, there's social change coming on in our environment in terms of the I guess the baby boom is sort of moving on. Um, the millennials sort of coming up with different perspective, different communication mechanisms. And then looking at the, the, the challenges of things like commercialisation. And, uh, you know, there's huge problems that you can buy your foods from the coals and woods, but it doesn't taste like real stuff. Um, you think it's real stuff until you start finding you know, your food from the home garden organic and you know that there's a big difference. Um, Supermarkets now they're, they're getting the, mar the food from anywhere around the world, rarely in your local area. And even if it's in your local area, I'll often go to your local farms, down to some warehouse in Sydney or Melbourne, then back here three days later, and it's already getting a bit tired. Um, there's a problem of ur urbanisation, and a lot of the, um, the sort of early settlements were on relatively fertile, or fertile soils have been built out and there's some um, now large areas of Brisbane that are really good soils and now it's all suburbs 
and the suburbs are such that the houses are close together, there's no room for gardens at all. Um, and then there's globalisation. Well, we've seen the, the effect of the pandemic and you know, we can buy all sorts of stuff from overseas, but a lot of it we don't need, a lot of it um, we're probably better off doing without. And uh, you know, I suppose this uh, comes back to the um, original um, landholders of this business boat people are coming since the you know, 1700s. Um, you know, there's, there's good things with commercialisation, urbanisation, globalisation, but we've got to sort out what's the good stuff and discard what's the, the bad stuff. And amongst, amongst the good stuff is some of the foods and, um, uh, foods and medicines that have been grown by um, traditional societies for a long time that can bypass our um, somewhat fractured healthcare system. OK, responses to challenges. OK, so there's a few issues here that we need to have a look at. Um, I said there's, there's motivation. In other words, you know, we need to be driven. We need to get in our heads what's going to drive us forward. Um, having decided to move forward, there's a question of information. In other words, if we, we haven't got the information to do the right thing, then we're going to go up the uh, down rabbit holes. As, and then once, once you get the information, then you've got to get those resources together. Now, I suppose a few other little things in there that um, I found there's sort of resistance to change at, at all sorts of levels. And there's a need to, to monitor the progress. And I've got here a photo of one, one of my various gardens. And the message here is this is a garden of exclusion. Right, we're actually excluding the, the pests, we're excluding the natural predators, we're excluding the bees. Right? And this is dealing with the symptom. Right? The problem is that, we, is that there isn't a, uh, an ecosystem where everything feeds on something else and everything's happy. So uh, if your tomatoes are going to be eaten by the birds or the possums or the bats, exclusion's just fine. But for a holistic garden that's uh, an ecosystem within itself, we need to do better. OK, motivation. Um, I suppose mo motivation's a lot about something that needs to be clear and simple and consistent with our values. So I guess one of the ways to get our head around a, um, a spectrum of things that we can move forward with, this idea of having healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy environment and healthy people. And that, to me, is encapsulates a lot of what the, the land care people are actually trying to do, but it starts the soil. Right? And some people, most people don't have a lot of choice with soil, but do have choices to how you might improve it. Um, and I, I suppose uh, you know, the picture I'm showing you, that's, uh, it's a happy place. We need to be happy in what we're doing. Now, there's need for, um, for flowers, for productivity, um, and, and a large degree of resilience. OK, so where, where do we get our information from? Um, a lot of value of face-to-face -face exchanges. Um, now you've got meetings, uh, site visits. Uh, there's written material and um, we've uh, produced a, a planting guide that's quite specific to Brisbane, but it gives you a good idea of um, how to grow, what to grow, what time frames to grow, what fertilisers. And these are things that need to be collated for whatever you're trying to grow, wherever you're growing. And there's things like sort of newsletters, websites, social media where and there's this sort of ebb and flow of um, information. OK, coming from a mining geological background, I do a lot of work in soils. Um, and I suppose one of the disagreements between myself and a lot of the soils people is that I look at soils from the rock upwards. Um, so this is a geological map of Brisbane. Now, the key information is there are a few areas of really good soils. Um, the red there is the, the granite, which is really good for fruit growing because it's got a lot of potassium in it. Um, there's bits of orange there, and that's uh, volcanic basalt uh, country. That's uh, a really good for your, your vegetables. And so armed with this, and now I actually live in the, the purple patch here, which is appalling soil. I can deal with that because I know what I need to add. I need to add a trail load of 
basalt crushed to dust, I need to add a trail load of decomposed granite, and suddenly I can produce all sorts of fruit and vegetables with just a little bit more um, carbon through the forest mulch and some animal manures. Um, so organic matter is good, drainage is really important, so, and understanding the relationship between drainage and the plants you're growing. Some things love wet feet, some things hate wet feet. Understand your plants, then look at your, um, how that works within your soil. Um, moisture holding capacity. So in, in Brisbane we tend to have a, uh, a wet season, a dry season. So um, there's some, it's important to have that ability to hold the moisture in the soil in a dry season. As it turns out, we've missed a dry season. It's just been wet, 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 as is most of the East Coast. Um, also, the soil biology is, is important, and that's one of the things about having a high amount of um, organic matter. You get all these bugs in the soil, and it's the, the bugs in the soil and the microbes and the fungi that break down that basalt and granite to make it fertile. So a lot of the, the um, agronomists out there say, oh, no, no, adding crusted dust doesn't really think it's not soluble. Well, it becomes soluble because of soil biology, um, I can't bring an argument with them, so I take a step back. Um, and, and, and finally, and, and certainly in the Queensland context, if your soil is uncovered, you're going to get weeds. Now, I think that's probably something that applies pretty widely in the, the land care community as well. Um, good layer of mulch is good until you get a scrub turkey. Then all that mulch gets scraped up into a, um, a mound for the purposes of mating. I'm, I'm working on that one. Um, healthy plants. Um, so that again, it's, there's a whole lot of things that we need to get our heads around. Um, one of them is that planting at the right time of year. You know, there's seasons for planting this and that and the next thing. You need to get that information. What is, what soil does that plant need? Um, and you know, there's plants like acidic soils, plants like alkaline soils. If you know what this plant wants, then you've got to actually adjust your soil by various means. It can be you want to make it more alkaline, you've got choices of um, lime, agricultural lime, dolomite or coal ash. Big fan of coal ash. Um, if you want more acidic, um, you've got to go for things like uh, some of the, the barks, the uh, bamboo, shredded bamboo, um, uh, cajarinas, um, they make a very acid, acidic bark. Um, another thing I often have a discussion with, with members of our uh, Garden communities, fertilising stage of growth. Is when things are very small, they need to get their roots happening. So that's the need for potassium and phosphorus. But once they're established, they need lots of nitrogen. And if you want to get fruit, then you need your potassium and um, potassium and phosphorus again. So you know, we, we fertilise things at different rates. Um, okay. Particularly in the home garden, one of the things I look for is, is a long harvest. So instead of growing cabbage or a, um, a cauliflower, I'll grow kale. Because kale I can get close to two years of feeding out of. So with a, um, a, a cauliflower, I'll get a week. Right? That's having that long harvest period. And that I think goes back to understanding your ecosystem and you need healthy food over that time frame. Healthy environment. Now, this is a fantastic picture, this one. I, I try and have a bird-friendly environment, and if you can get a kookaburra to sit on your veranda rail, you know you've got a pretty happy environment. Um, so, you know, we're avoiding toxic chemicals. Um, we're creating a food web, which means lots of sticks, lizards, frogs, insects, spiders. Creepy crawlies a lot of people don't like, but I can live with them. Kookaburra works for the kookaburra, and that involves creating habitat and also having some native plants so that the, the native bird life can, can come in and, and populate, which is really important for in insect control in my garden. So what does gardening do? Well, it's a resource. We get nutrient-dense food and vegetables. We get herbs for flavour and medicine. Um, exercise something that our society is, is probably a bit, bit light on and... Um, as, as I age a bit, I'm becoming increasingly aware of the, the need to keep exercising. So I've got no intention of retiring. I'm going to keep on gardening to 
until I can compost no more. Um, and, and the other thing, it, it actually gives us a clean air to live in. Well, some of my research actually came to the conclusion that the lung function of miners in general is better than the lung function of people in the cities because of our pollution. Some coal mines get a lot of coal dust, they've got a big problem. But by and large, living in the country is a better place than living in the city in terms of access to good oxygen. And there's finally, it's the, um, the effect of reducing stress by being in the garden and in nature. So, you know, land care, people out of the bush, it's a happy place. My garden's a happy place as well. So, gets to the end. So, running over things quickly. Um, Recognise health as a priority and you do that with a, um, a healthy ecosystem in which you're a part, right? You're a part of that ecosystem. Um, we need, need a bit of motivation to get going. Think about that. Um, good idea to use community. So that's uh, joining a, a, a group, a gardening group or land care groups. Um, to do the right thing, we actually need the knowledge. Um, and then I think, you know, to some extent, we've got to look at these, these global warming, uh, global warming, global commercialisation, um, and, and you know, just be aware of what we do. Is that creating a problem or trying to address it? But in, you know, when it comes to day to day, you need to, well, you think of the global thing, you need to act on the local issues. And finally, I suggest you all go out and enjoy your garden and have a good time. Thank you. <laughs>